Oh, hello, friend. I just got back from my acupuncture again. Oh, you had your acupuncture? Oh, really you feeling good? Wow. Hi. Well, you have to move now. More? Yeah. <laughs> that was like three-eighths of an inch. Well, I'm glad we did more. Now we get to explore what order to do these in. Walk it that way. Walk it that way. Keep going. Okay, now we go back this way. I want it over there. There we go. So then we get this one off and we put it over there like that one. Because the screws are gonna punch all sorts of holes in the siding, I was recommended to use this particular and rather pricey polyurethane caulk to put between the wood and the metal. The idea being that whatever holes I end up making get sealed by the caulk. So for this, I wanna get it up in position, start with the middle screw, work down the middle stud, and then work out and down, out and down, out and down. We'll pick it up and then both move towards the middle and hold it from the top. Okay, now we can adjust angle a little bit. Now make sure your screw hole is in line. So hold that. I wanna get a second one here-ish. And I wanna get another one over here. For this, you can do like this. We want a lot around these edges where it's gonna bend. So like every four inches, The caulk was good for between the metal and the wood, but between overlapping sheets of metal, I was told that manufacturers use VHB tape with tape primer. So that's what I did. I've never used this stuff before. I don't know how wet it's supposed to go on. Allow primer to dry thoroughly before applying tape. So now you guys can see why I wanted the extra blocking all the way along those joints. And so I'm not trying to deal with floppy here. So when it comes to doing the other side, we'll get it at least till it's screwed on to here and kind of pull it out and reach around. And then glue and then tape. Yeah. Finally, I get a job for left-hander. Have you ever tried identifying as right-handed? You can peel the plastic off first. No, we'll prime it first because it has to dry. Oh, you're priming this metal. Okay. Okay. The best way I can think of is to have someone standing on top holding them up and then the other person goops it and then the person on top lets this half of it roll down. Are you able to push those up towards me? Push up the, the one on your right first if you're facing the back. Okay, do the other one. All right, now you can goop. I still haven't decided how I would have attacked sealing these roof panels without Santa's help, but I am sure I would have found a way. Okay, this one's coming down. Go for it. That was fun. <laughs> now the one on your right side. Okay. 
I almost don't have to do anything with these. So if you get that whole side done, I can roll this out and then I might be able to get most of this side from up here. Smack. And we'll only go to here so I have enough room to peel stuff up. And then we can still hope to get the taping done without having to undo and redo screws. That'll do. I'm going to put a mark on that one so we know we don't go past that. Should be able to get the tape in there. So we'll leave that like that for a minute. I think I need to get this corner up, then do this one, and then we can continue here. I think that might have been just the completely wrong one to start with, but we'll do it. I think I might want to do that one and this one at the same time. Well, that'll work, then we can get this one after. Sorry, grass. Oof. That was okay. This day was a lot of hammering, malleting, and generally making noise. I'm leaving more of the time-lapse footage in because one, it gives you an idea of just how much ridiculous work was needed, and B, it actually doesn't look that bad. I used the same story pole that I was using on the roof to get my nice spacing for all the screws around all of the edges that were going to need to be bent. I don't think that's doing anything. See, I don't want to just make an indent where the board ends. I don't think this will do anything at all. I could be wrong. <laughs> Trying to establish that corner around a two by four is tough. I don't know if you can tell, but that is definitely marking it a bit. This bottom part is almost at the point where I could screw it in.
All right, let me let me show you what's going on here. I always am happy to hear input from people. I always hope that that input be given in a way that uh, might allow for the possibility that I've already thought of things. So we've got a, a little 18 inch aluminum brake here and we got these guys. This is what they use when they're doing duct work. The difficulty is that duct work is 22 to 24 gauge and this is 20 gauge. So <clears throat> trying to bend this with this short little tool is one, really imprecise, and two, still gives me goofy marks all over the place, and three, has to be done over no more than about an inch and a quarter, and four, nobody in town has a 10 foot metal brake, and five, that would require getting exactly perfect lengths on all my bends before they get put up. Upon six, a trailer that we already knew was not square to begin with. So lots of factors go into this being the solution I use. What I suspect probably happens with the manufacturers is First, they are able to build more square frames because they're not using 50 year old leftover RV trailer bases. Second, they don't bend anything around. They probably cut to the edge or a little bit short and then apply weather strip and trim. So if you look at that one over there, all of its edges have the silver stuff around it. I suspect that underneath that trim is some weather stripping material and that if you were to pull the trim off, you would not see a bend. You would see two shorter cut pieces of metal. I do try to learn from my mistakes and it seemed like it would be easier on the other side to start just by pushing. It's, it's a bit banged up looking, but overall it's uh, not as offensive as I was expecting it to turn out with just banging it. I think that's how we're doing it. <laughs> like, that was not nearly as bad. And I sort of suspected it might go like that. It's not totally smooth, but it is much less wobbly. A win is a win. I might have scratched the front. <laughs> well, that worked. I am really pleased at how close I got that. I thought I would have to be fussing that a bunch. So these marks are the bits that I'm gonna cut out of these, and then I can fold this down into a corner that I can put over the top corners of the trailer that will hopefully improve the waterproofness in those spots because I know that it will be a little bit lacking. So we're going to try to cut through a bunch of these at once. So 
So that's what we're trying to do with these. That's not terrible. It's not pretty, but it's not terrible. Because of how messy the caulk was, I didn't want to be putting that on before I was finished all my malleting and hammering, so I did have to come back after and get all the caulk in, and then I could get the screws in. I wanted full metal wrap all the way around where the door would go, so I got to demonstrate how bad of an idea it was that Twitch Chat had to use this bending tool basically anywhere else. Yeah, this is how this is gonna go. It might be okay once it gets nudged in under here. Whether we need perfection or not, a big part of how I learn is do a thing and figure out what I screwed up. Oh, hello. Hi. You know, it's not awful. Loosen the screws, you say? That's a good idea. Well, we got the uh, rough opening prepped as much as we can. 